Numbers are thrown out all the time. Are they proof of some truth or just fluff that bluffs us? These statistics need some serious looking into. I'm Brendan Fernandez and that's what I'll do. Because some numbers are just worth figuring out. Singapore's crime rate is the lowest it's been in 30 years, despite the fact that it has an average police-to-population ratio. Are we getting so rich that crime has lost its shine? Or could bigger prisons be the answer? Four seconds, and in the U.S., someone's identity could have just been stolen. Five minutes, and in Japan, a car theft could have just taken place. Two and a half hours. And in Australia, a kidnap could have just occurred. Here in Singapore, chances are, nothing's happened. Singapore has one of the lowest crime rates in the world. In fact, in 2012, Singapore saw the lowest overall crime rate in three decades, meaning that crime rates have fallen about 40% in the last 30 years. In fact, in 2012, 175 days went by where there were no acts of robbery, 163 days without any snatch thefts. And if we break it down even further, almost all manner of crime has seen a significant drop. From 1992 to 2012, snatch theft cases dropped by almost 60%. Murder and robbery cases have fallen even more, by about 70%. Topping all of that, housebreaking and motor vehicle theft have dropped by about 80%. Only one category of crime has gone up. Cheating and related offenses, which includes white-collar crime, has risen by about 50%. There are some others which have faded into the background. The last time someone attempted to rob a bank, half a decade ago. A man disguised as a woman threatened a bank teller in City Plaza with a fake bomb. He was tackled to the ground and arrested for attempted robbery. The last firearm attack, seven years ago. Nightclub owner Lim Hock Su was shot point blank six times in his flat. The last terrorist bomb even further back. More than 40 years ago, in 1965, Indonesian bombers detonated a bomb at McDonald House. The attack killed three people and injured 33 others. So is it just the streets of Singapore that have become safer? Or is this a phenomenon experienced by other developed countries as well? From 1992 to 2011, the U.S. saw a drop of about 13% in property crime rates. Violent crime there fell by about 15%. While Australia saw a drop of almost 30% in property crime, it saw a slight increase of roughly 3% in violent crime. But in Switzerland, overall crime actually doubled from 2001 to 2010. So not all developed countries are seeing a fall in crime. How is Singapore doing it? better policing, an aging society, a more educated population, or better standards of living, something Singapore has been enjoying for a while. There's probably no one single cause. It's more a combination of a few. Let's look at economic growth first. Does a poor economy make for a more dangerous city? On the horizontal, the past 20 years, 1992 to 2012. On my left, the number of reported crimes for 100,000 residents. Crime rate was high in 1992, over 1,300 reported crimes per 100,000 people. But post-1992, there was a steady decline in crime rates. In fact, crime fell to an all-time low in 2001, less than half of what was reported nine years before. Our city became vastly safer after 2001. In 2012, there are only 584 reported crimes per 100,000 residents. That's about a 58% decline in crime from 20 years ago. 
Did our stunning economic growth in the last 20 years have anything to do with declining crime rates? Here on my right is our GDP per capita. We did well in the last 20 years. GDP per capita in 2012 was three times what we had in 1992. Let's take a closer look at the numbers. This spike in 1998 coincided with the Asian financial crisis. In 2001, we were hit by a global downturn again. This time, it was the burst of the dot-com bubble. GDP growth per capita fell by almost 6%. But that was also the year crime rates drifted downwards to an all-time low. So while it appears that a recession might create more motivation to commit crime, it might also allow for fewer opportunities. If we look at the next spike in crime, that was in 2005. The economy was on an upward swing. GDP per capita had gone up by 7% from the year before. So why the increase in crime rates? Did we just debunk the much-held belief that a poor economy leads to a crime-ridden city? But in Monitoring the Impact of Economic Crisis on Crime, a report by the UN's Office on Drugs and Crime, 80% of countries surveyed showed economic activity could forecast changes in at least one crime type, suggesting crime is in some way pegged to the economy. But it seems Singapore is a bit of an outlier and that crime rates here depend on much more than that. Professor, what is the relationship between economic growth and crime rates with specific reference to Singapore? Mm. Well, I mean, one is tempted to say that, you know, the, 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 the more sustained high growth you have, then there will be less people who belong to the have-not categories and therefore, you know, no need to, 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 to commit crimes. But I think that's uh, a little bit too simplistic an analogy because at the, the root cause of crime is not necessarily always growth because economic growth is a macro concept, right? There's so many other reasons and in this discussion on economic growth and crime, one of the most pressing concerns for sociologists always is the, when you have growth, is the benefits of growth equally spread out. Most broad crime categories might have gone down over the years, but in the last one year, two types of crime have actually risen. From 2011 to 2012, the number of thefts actually rose by 0.6%, or an increase of 107 cases. So maybe Singaporeans shouldn't be leaving their things around too much. And what was top choice for thieves in mid-2012? These. From mid-2011 to mid-2012, bicycle theft jumped 42%. Over 1,200 bicycle thefts were reported in 2012, making up about 7% of total theft and related crimes. So, to nab bicycle thieves in mid-2012, CCTVs and security-enhanced bicycle racks were installed at bicycle bays. This helped bring bicycle theft down by 20%. So there were some specific crimes, like for example theft, mm -hmm. that rose from 2011 to 2012. Why do you think those specific crimes were on the rise when everything else was going down? If you're talking about petty thefts, right, um, for example bicycle crimes, right, uh, that could be due to the fact that you know the, the the environment was just a little bit more conducive for that sort of you know um, activity. So, for example, if you had a lot more people riding bikes, leaving them unattended at stations and so forth, and and others would come around and for convenience just hop onto something that didn't belong to them and take off with it, right? So, when new opportunities arise, then well, you're going to see some uh, deviant activities there. It's not just the theft category that's on the up. Other subcategories have also been climbing. Molest cases on public buses and trains went up 34 percent between 2011 and 2012. They went up from 114 to 153. Ever received a phone call saying you've won a lucky draw? While the number of phone scams like these has dropped, 
from 183 in 2011 to 181 in 2012, the amount of money lost jumped from 6.4 million to 7.4 million Singapore dollars, meaning fewer people were cheated, but for more money. You might have to deal with craftier callers, but crime is on the decline. It might be because something other than the police is catching up with our criminals. The crime rate in Singapore is at an all-time low. If it's not the economy, why is crime declining? Maybe criminals are going into retirement. In Singapore, about one in three of those jailed in 2012 was between 21 and 30 years of age. Those in that age group make up the highest proportion of the prison population. In the last 28 years, the resident population between 21 and 30 years of age has fallen from 22.7% to about 13.6%. Now that's about 9 percentage points. In that same time, crime has fallen about 55%. Does the fact that our population is aging have anything to do with our declining crime rate? So when we talk about aging population, essentially you're talking about the proportion of older persons living in Singapore. Has right. that gone up, right? Um, I think in order to address this, you know, these statistics meaningfully, we will have to take into consideration the base, which is the population size. Uh, if you talk specifically about Singapore, while we are aging progressively because the pro we d we're just not dying, right? So therefore the proportion who are in their 60s, 70s and 80s have inched up. But concurrently, population also has not shrunk because of our efforts through immigration. I don't think that we necessarily saw fewer younger people compared to older people, okay. compared to 10 years ago, for example, because our population has grown, right? Yeah. So if you are looking at then the statistics in Singapore, can you attribute the f drop in crime rate you know, to an aging population? I think in our case, probably not. Now, considering that criminals haven't gotten too old to commit crime, you think that the low crime rate is because we have lots of police out there to stop them. Singapore actually has a fairly average police to population ratio compared to other developed countries. We have about 269 police officers to every 100,000 people. Like us, Australia and Japan have over 200 police to every 100,000 residents. Malaysia and Scotland have over 300 to every 100,000 residents. At almost double that number is Hong Kong, with a police to population ratio of about 400 police for every 100,000 residents. So how is it that we have one of the lowest crime rates in the world despite our average police to population ratio? It's because about 40% of the crimes in Singapore are solved with public assistance. And that doesn't just mean tip-offs or witness testimonies. Singapore started its Neighbourhood Police Post, or NPP, system in 1983. The idea was to have community policing. Designating a group of police to the same neighbourhood, so they become familiar with the community. And the community becomes familiar with them. I think having a strong relationship with the community allows the police to achieve much more than what would otherwise be possible. Um, besides allowing us to put forth our crime prevention messages more effectively, a strong relationship also means that the community trusts us more and are more willing to assist us in crime-related matters. Indeed, about 40% of our crimes are actually solved with public assistance. Um, actually, we adapted from the Japanese Koban system way back in 1983. Um, but we have made a few tweaks along the way. Uh, for example, a fundamental shift was in uh, 1997 when we rolled out our, our own NPC system. The number of police posts has since been reduced from 91 to 63. 
Instead, we've added 35 of what we call the neighborhood police centers, or NPC. They become a one-stop policing center for the community in which they're situated. The NPP offers only basic police functions such as uh, house visits, uh, bicycle patrols, foot patrols. Uh, investigation, which is a very core police function, uh, then still primarily resides with the six police land divisions. So the NPC system actually changes this. It offers much more, uh, including investigative as well as uh, forensic capabilities. And it also has its own fleet of patrol vehicles. Uh, so with 35 NPCs spread across the island, this actually increased our reach and distribution and reduced our response times to incidents. Since this shift to the NPC system in 1997, crime rates fell about 40% from then until 2012. Currently, we are embarking on a new initiative which we call COPS. COPS stands for Community Policing System. Firstly, we are going to bring our crime fighting capabilities closer to the ground. Second, to further enhance our relationship with the community. And lastly, to utilize technology to better deter, detect and fight crime. Um, as part of the COPS rollout, we are going to put in police cameras at all 10,000 HDB blocks and uh, multi-storey car parks by 2016. Um, with the COPS rollout, we are going to need more officers. And, uh, and in fact, it's about a thousand more, and uh, we are looking to internally deploy maybe about 600 and uh, recruiting another 400. All this policing reduces crime, but could it also be that crime rates have fallen because we put away all the criminals? About 0.2% of the population in our sunny island don't enjoy the great outdoors like the rest of us. In 2012, there were about 12,500 inmates locked up in our prisons. That's a drop of roughly 30% from 2002. So while our resident population climbed 30%, prison populations have actually fallen. Interesting considering developed countries usually see jumps in prison populations as resident populations rise. Firstly, our crime rate has uh, been falling over many consecutive years. Singapore is one of the safest cities in Asia, among the top 10 safest cities in the world. Secondly, we have an increasing uh, educated population and also a growing economy. This provides opportunities for the next generation of Singaporeans and thereby this reduces propensity for crime and criminality. The third reason is that uh, as a criminal justice system, we have implemented several diversionary measures over the years. For example, the courts now have more community sentencing options, uh, for example, the day reporting orders, community service orders, mandatory treatment orders. These diversionary measures not only stopped low-risk offenders from adding to prison populations, Community-based programs also help reduce cases of re-offences. One of the most economical and effective schemes actually sends inmates home. In 2000, the Singapore Prison Service introduced the Home Detention Scheme. Inmates with good behaviour could serve out the final leg of their sentences monitored at home. Almost 9 out of 10 inmates on such CBP programs didn't return within two years. The home detention scheme is uh, more effective compared to releasing uh, offenders directly from prisons. Because we provide uh, support, we help the offenders to find a job and they can reside with their family because families are the ones that can help the, the offenders adjust to the life after imprisonment and uh, it's less likely that uh, offenders will go back to their uh, willful ways again. A redictivism rate is the percentage of criminals who re-offend within two years of leaving prison. Singapore's fell from 57.7% in 1992 to 23.6% in 2012. Its redictivism rate is one of the lowest in the world. 
Our ultimate goal in our programs is to reduce re-offending. And this is a practical and a reasonable thing to do because many offenders return back to the society after a short period of time in prison. And when a person re-offends, uh, public safety is compromised. Therefore, when we reform uh, offenders, it contributes to better public safety and also reduces the risk to future potential victims. Capital punishment, another possible reason for our low crime rates. The Ministry of Home Affairs maintains that our use of capital punishment deters serious crime like murder and drug offences. But in July 2011, the Singapore government began a review of the use of the death penalty. Now, instead of death, certain drug offenders could face life imprisonment with caning. And those guilty of homicide will only be sentenced to death if there was an intention to kill. Those changes came into effect in January 2012. So those on death row are able to sit for re-sentencing. As of 2012, there were 35 prisoners on death row, 28 for drug-related offences and 7 for murder. One of those death row prisoners has already escaped the gallows after the Court of Appeal set aside his conviction. The other 34 death row cases may come under review. The police say that Singapore is one of the safest cities in the world. The hope is that crime rates will continue to fall. Maybe then institutions like this will one day be obsolete. But even as old crimes die out, new ones will emerge. A truly safe city is never a given. The trick, really, is in keeping up with the criminals. Or better yet, staying one step ahead of them. <laughs>